school is unable to hire qualified teachers, lacks a proper classroom structure, and students are forced to sit on the ground, then the principal or manager is struggling to fill the roles of both a teacher and administrator. What would you call such an institution? In some cases, students study under a roof that leaks terribly. This is an environment that is far from conducive for learning. And despite these dead conditions, the management is left to handle the school with minimal support. Diocesis, it is essential to recognize your capacity and evaluate how many schools you can effectively serve. Hello, people of God. Welcome to this episode on Let's Keep Our Education Catholic. I'm Sister Augustine Mbata. In today's episode on capacity evaluation, we will focus on two areas, the diocese and individual schools. This assessment will examine how many schools each diocese can realistically support. So the first step is to gather data on the number of Catholic schools within each diocese whether established by religious orders or by the diocese itself. This data will provide insight into the demographics of the schools and the human and material resources available to them. So evaluators will begin to ask key questions, questions like what level of support does the diocese offer each of its schools? How many of these schools are independent? How many are solely financed by parishes how many are owned and managed by religious institutions? Do these schools meet the necessary requirements to be classified as Catholic schools? You know, it is the diocese's responsibility to ensure that all schools within its boundaries adhere to Catholic values and standards. But then unfortunately, you know, there is a growing trend of inconsistency and a lack of adherence to Catholic educational regulations in the establishment and management of Catholic schools, and we cannot allow this to continue. Then on individual school level, evaluators will assess the available resources, student numbers, the staff size to determine the capacity of each school and how many students they can effectively serve. But today we see schools that are overpopulated beyond their capacity, why others have abundant resources but few students. You know, it is puzzling why certain schools are allowed to operate under such poor conditions. From my own research, particularly in developing countries, I've witnessed schools without basic resources. I've seen students study under challenging conditions with classrooms in poor shape and lacking essential resources. Meanwhile, in the same diocese, other schools have more resources than they even need. We cannot allow such imbalance to persist. So at the end of the evaluation phase, the team will provide a detailed report, you know, categorizing schools based on their strengths and challenges, you know, to guide the diocese on which school needs support, which should be merged, and in most extreme cases, those that may need to be closed. So the focus should not be establishing Catholic schools everywhere, but on ensuring that the schools that we do have are indeed Catholic in spirit and quality. What are some practical remedies? From the recommendations of uh, the evaluators, one of the practical steps diocese can take is fostering a culture where schools support each other. The evaluation team will provide a list of schools needing support and those that are able to offer it. So a well-organized approach could be um, tasking or approaching the well-resourced schools to support those less fortunate. The diocese could assign each well-off school the responsibility of building at least one classroom block for a poorer school, or maybe providing school supplies like teaching materials or contributing to purchasing a school bus or even building staff and administrative offices. This isn't rocket science. It is practical, tangible way to make a difference. Because in some urban areas and suburban areas, Cali schools have ample resources, sometimes even more than they need. But then unfortunately, these resources are often misappropriated 
for personal interest or other non-essential expenditures. But to what end? If we cannot build and collaborate at Catholic schools within the same diocese, so each of these better of schools could be given a time frame, you know, to fulfill their responsibility of supporting another school. Some schools are really thriving, winning competitions, and enjoying privileges based on various factors. Beautiful. But then this doesn't mean that uh, administrators in less affluent areas aren't doing a good job. In fact, some of them are at performing their counterparts in more privileged areas, despite their challenging circumstances. And some of these administrators in poorer schools are even responsible for feeding their students from their own resources. We must see ourselves as one family. In a family, the wealthier members carry the burden of lifting their siblings. So Catholic schools within a diocese should harmonize their resources and work together for the betterment of all. My point is clear. Dioceses and the offices responsible for Cali schools should re-strategize and implement practical solutions to support schools lacking basic resources. But then, this endeavor is not forced, but it should be filled with Christ-like generosity of spirit. How do we teach students, parents, donors to be givers as well as takers? So can the well-endowed schools begin to reach out to the more needy schools? And then can those schools who are poorer learn to be less self-defensive and feel gratitude? Can we learn to love? Remember, we rise by lifting orders. Thank you for joining me today on Let's Keep Our Education Catholic. Together we can make a difference. So if you are interested in supporting any of the schools in poorer conditions, send me a private message. And don't forget to subscribe, follow, leave a review, and share this podcast with others. Until next time, stay blessed.